welcome to our partner community. We appreciate you joining us on another episode of Go Remote. Uh, very honored today to have a special guest with us from one of our favorite suppliers, Vonage. We've got Akil Shahid joining us. He's the Vice President of uh, Strategic Partnerships with Vonage. Uh, 20, pl 20 plus years in the industry and 13 years with Vonage. So Akil, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Wow. It's an honor to be here. Listen, I wanted to start with some questions. I mean, it's an on, on everyone's mind. We want to start with one. We are in unprecedented times. We'd all agree with that. What is Vonage yeah. hearing from its partners and customers in terms of their customer needs and, and how have these needs changed with everything going on? Yeah, great question. You know, obviously tons going on in the world uh, at, this, at this time, right? I mean, I say, you know, at Vonage, uh, we are the world's most flexible communications platform, right? And because of that flexibility, we were able to quickly pivot and create, you know, and offer solutions for our customers uh, that were very timely for the for the situation we're in and allow them to transition to the remote, uh, remote work environment. Um, and we've developed a lot of free applications and free solutions for businesses to trans transition effectively, especially those on the front line during this pandemic, right? Such as healthcare, education, nonprofit uh, industries. And as the business world continues to open slowly, it's important that we focus on how remote solutions can empower companies to uh, not only open safely, uh, but also do it without compromising productivity. So that's kind of what we're seeing, right? And again, when you look at you know the the partner community right now, and I'm sure you're seeing this, right? There's a ton of demand right now on uh, on working from anywhere, having a virtual environment, being able to be connected to not only employees but also their customers, and make sure that they're able to provide a solution that allows them to continue to operate as usual. Uh, without again, like I said, compromising any of the reliability and the the flexibility that they had when they were working in the offices. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you you focusing on verticals, right? Because it is different based upon what vertical that customer falls in, as far as the messaging. Right. And our audience are partners that have built successful business over the years, but this is a new environment. What changes should partners adopt in terms of uncovering and addressing customers' needs when it comes to UCAS and CCAS, where you guys play? Yeah, a great question. I mean, you know, uh, when we look at this remote workforce environment, right, I mean, you know, uh, as you know, we have been evangelizing this remote work environment for some time. Uh, some companies were quick to adopt, others uh, that were slowly getting there. And obviously, with this current environment, I think everything has got super accelerated, right? They had to get there overnight. They had to shift to a complete work environment, a work from home environment. And I kind of see what we're going going through right now, uh, and I'm, I'm sure the partners are seeing this is, as three different uh, challenges that customers are having to deal with. One is obviously your office environment, right? Taking uh, workers that were normally working in the office and now moving them remotely, having them work from home, providing them the tools, the resources, and the capabilities to, to accomplish their tasks at home. Uh, second big thing we saw was in the contact center space, right? A lot of agents, right, that are now having to normally from service support, sales organizations now work remotely as well. So making sure that you're empowering them, providing them the tools to be able to accomplish those tasks. And the last thing uh, that we're seeing a lot of demand around is critical uh, services, right? Critical services meaning healthcare, uh, you know, uh, you know, we talked about education, we talked about nonprofit organizations that have had to now completely change the way and how they're doing business and how they're, you know, servicing their customers. So because of those elements, you know, really, I think what it's come down to is when you when partners or when providers like us sit down with, with uh, the underlying customers and speak with them about their overall strategy. I think now it is far more beyond just immediate solution, right? From a UC or context center perspective, it's really bringing all those different elements that they're normally having to interact with at the office, at home, being able to provide those capabilities, but also doing it securely, being able to provide it in a single pane of glass, so it's easy for them to consume, so it's not too cumbersome, so they're not having to go through five different panes of glass. So I think that's the element, that's the level of discussion that we, that it needs to happen, that I'm I'm seeing happen more now than ever before to really kind of understand that overall trajectory that the organization's on. And then business continuity has become a big portion. As businesses come back to work, I'm sure that's what one of the one of the things that com companies are gonna look at is make sure that they have a business continuity plan in place because uh, so that they're prepared in the event a situation like this ever happens again in the future. 
And that's one of the areas that Bondage is really unique is the fact that you guys have your own UCAS and CCAS platform. Because like you said, if you think about it, businesses overnight became CCAS customers because employees just literally became agents because they're now working from home. Right. I mean, could, can you provide a few specific examples, maybe some use cases to illustrate how Vonage has quickly and powerfully enabled remote teams over the past few months? Absolutely. You know, and um, and to kind of build upon, you know, what you mentioned earlier, uh, JR, I mean, you know, when you, Vonage is one of the only players in the space that actually owns the entire stack. I own Unified Communication Stack, our own contact center stack, and our own API stack. The power of having that is that it allows us to really innovate quickly and react to the, the, the market needs fast, right? So, so some, some recent situations where customers had to quickly enable their workforce by leveraging these stacks, we were able to really provide them a very unique solution. For example, there's a company called Maven, which is a large uh, digital uh, clinic for, for women. Right? We were able to empower that organization to really allow for uh, women to go and schedule their uh, appointments with their, their practitioners and their medical pro uh, pro providers virtually right so they could schedule it you know in the app itself you know exactly when they wanted to to, to sit down and, and see a practitioner they could see the practitioner now leveraging our video apis where they're able to now virtually connect with the doctor and the patient you know through a secure connection secure video connection so it's not going out over the public internet it's not going out in an un unencrypted fashion so it's like 100 encrypted and they were able to reduce the the time that it would t normally take for a, a patient to kind of call and get an appointment scheduled, and also allows for that patient to sit securely and you know at their home and be able to to communicate with the uh, with, with the, um, the, the 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 provider, right? So that's one example, right? And then there's other organizations like this company called You First that we basically help with, and what we helped with them was kind of the, this uh, leveraging our API technology where they could hold their place in queue. So think of it as if you're, you know, going into a grocery store or if you wanted to go purchase a product rather than standing in lines and, you know, and having to essentially hang out with everyone else and, and you know, to, you know, you actually now can virtually hold your place in queue and the system would actually send you a text message letting you know, hey, you're, you're coming up, so you better start heading to the uh, grocery store, start heading to the bank or start heading to whatever area you're basically uh, holding in queue and, and allows you to socially distance you get there and you're able to consume the services that way and then you know the last but not least is a company uh, called trevor project which is you know uh, it's a suicide prevention and crisis prevention organization focused more on the lgbtq community um, and we were able to kind of take their entire organization from a contact center services right and and, and and make it virtual because they were obviously they saw a huge spike and the number of calls that they were receiving, you know, especially during the, the COVID uh, situation, right? And we were able to not only give them the volume capability and the, and the capacity to take those additional calls, but also take their entire uh, agent community and move it at home. So they could basically now take the calls virtually and, and do it all in a secure fashion. So they're not having to give up any of that security aspect. So that's kind of some examples of what we were able to do quickly. Yeah, Kiel, you mentioned the word security quite a few times in that last comment. And with so many working remotely now, security absolutely is a concern. What should a business be looking for to ensure secure collaboration? Yeah, great question. You know, and like I said, uh, security obviously is critical right now. It always has been important. I feel now it's even more important than it has ever been, right? Because we have folks, like, to your point, working from home. You don't have the same level of security aspects that you normally would in an office, right? You know, you know, you don't know if the Wi-Fi connection is secure or what's happening. So we take security very, very seriously, right? To where the point to where all our voice uh, transmission is all encrypted, so all the traffic is 100% is encrypted. And then we've also leveraging our video APIs and, and API technology allow for organizations to really embed those those elements within their application. So they can now embed like video or voice or SMS or whatever aspect within their applications to ensure that their that information is one encrypted and second, you know, that you that unauthorized users are not entering into a meeting, for example, or bombing a meeting that they shouldn't be in, right? So it really allows to make sure that uh, we can keep security, you know, in place for folks that are collaborating, trying to communicate with one another and be able to leverage the technologies that, that we're providing them. And you know, all the partners are asking themselves, and we know this is just kind of a, your, your opinion, but what do you think the future of work looks like? You know, that's a great question. And I feel like, you know, where the future is going and, you know, is like uh, a lot of, a lot of folks are now had a taste of working remotely. Right. And I, I feel like, 
you'll see a big chunk of folks that uh, you know are are likely going to continue working remotely, right? Uh, you know, I, I I think there's uh, I read an article where they say about twenty five to thirty percent of the workforce will just continue working from home. They're never going to really come back. And actually, it, uh, it, there was always a debate around remote workforce, right? Is it, it does it allow for employees to be productive? Is it feasible? Does it actually work? And I feel like this entire COVID uh, situation has been more of an experiment around that that aspect, right? Where it has proven that yes, people can, that employees can be productive. Employees actually, in fact, are working harder when they're working remote, right? So it's definitely proven that aspect. Um, and then the technologies are now in place, and you know, I, I feel like through this this entire last four months of this COVID situation, everything ex got extremely turbocharged, right? What normally would uh, you know for a business would, that would would be from a technology perspective four or five years from now is now available today and is being used today. So that has really enabled organizations to allow for this remote workforce. So I feel like in the future, where things are going to go is you you're going to have that remote workforce and remote you know, working environments continue and organizations need to have the ability to perhaps tools and infrastructures in place to allow for that teaming, allow for that interaction to continue to take place between employees, right? So, they, so employees don't feel like they're isolated in, on an island, right? That allows for them to really collaborate and communicate and interact with one another and continue to build that relationship and continue to build that overall culture. But you will start seeing a ton of that happen. And obviously, and because of that, because of a lot of companies having exposure to that, right, I think the top talent is going to expect that, right? And, you know, by having the technologies in place and having the right infrastructure in place, you can attract that talent to be able to now get talent from anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, and not have to be limited to just your your, your geographical areas. So I feel like that's kind of where, where, where the trends are going to continue. And then all these are the API element examples I gave earlier are really going to help augment that overall experience and really make it seamless and make it simple and easy for the for the end users as well as the customers. Yeah, it's funny, every time you answer a question, you make me think of another question. And this is where one of our team members calls where we ask suppliers, what's your superpower? You mentioned globally, right? So we know we certainly have your guys' US presence, but how is Vonage uniquely positioned to empower partners and customers alike in the US and globally? Yeah, you know, I mean, the, uh, um, the good part about uh, where we are positioned in, in the space is right by having this entire portfolio, unified communications, contact center, and APIs, we're really able to provide unique solutions for our customers. Again, security, we talked about that. Having resiliency, having the flexibility, having the scalability, all these are critical aspects that are that are going to be needed in order to be able to provide that uh, environment for organizations to grow. And, and Vodage brings all of those uh, to the table, right? Like I mentioned earlier, we own their entire unified communication stack. We built it from the ground up. It is a global platform that people, uh, that organizations and customers can use in the enterprise space to really provide a unique solution. But then, you know, not only having unified communications, you know, is important, but but having a seamless experience for the end user. Like we're able to provide our users with a, just a single interface for them to interact with their customers from a contact center perspective to be able to take advantage of the unified communication stack and then take advantage of AI as well, which is now obviously becoming more and more predominant, right? So a lot of the tasks that normally you would have a person do can now be taken care of by a bot, right? Where you could have self-service IVR options that are basically allowing people to interact with, right? Having a conversation with the system where it's providing you simple things like, hey, what's the status of my order? Right, I need to change my password. You know, uh, I I basically have a, qu a quick question I need to answer to. Right, so those things that would normally take up a user's time can now all be done. You know, leveraging these technologies. And I, I feel like because we own that entire stack, we can continue to innovate. We can continue to provide a very unique solution for our customers that no other provider can. Right, so again, you can take stuff off the shelf that's already prepackaged, or you can go build your own. And that's a unique value proposition that Vonage has to offer. It's interesting how you turned a you know a negative into a positive, right? You used to be limited on the talent pool based upon where you were located. Now, with remote workforce and the technology that you guys provide, you can go after the best talent and provide them CX, right? The best experience for their customers, which are their employees, and then ultimately their end users. Love it. Yeah. How, how has the usage of the Vonage platform overall and Vonage video and collaboration changed over the past few months? What's what's new and exciting? Yeah, you know, the uh, again, you know, because everyone having to now, unfortunately, go work from home and having to now use technology to interact, we've seen a 2000% increase in our video and collaboration. 
right? Uh, which is a huge increase, right? A ton of companies that are now leveraging the video solution, video APIs, obviously to stay in touch with friends, family members, employees, customers, and doing it all securely in an embedded fashion, right? So they're able to take that technology and use it. We're seeing a ton of demand around our API solutions as well, where now people are embedding that in, in, in different technologies like SMS, two-factor authentication, voice embedded applications, right? And then if you look at where we are today, right? With, with services that we consume, like, you know, hey, I want to go pick up, you know, my groceries or I want to, you know, basically do a curbside pickup. All those are examples of technologies that Vonage provides where now we're able to enable those users to do things differently from a digital transformation perspective that wasn't possible, right? So we're seeing a huge, huge influx uh, happening from that perspective, right? Where you can communicate with your teller through a video, you can now order, you know, services, you can use geofencing technology to identify exactly when and where you are and when a, when a when a food should be ready for you to go pick up. So those are the kind of things we're seeing. And again, that's where you, uh, we're seeing a huge increase in the video and collaboration, like, just like the, the Vonage meetings application that we're using right now for this video, right? You can see how it really allows for people to bring, you know, to interact with one another and have that facial expression and be able to see each other as opposed to emailing and chatting and stuff like that. The problem, Kill, is that you have no passion about technology. That's the issue. You don't step Not at all. I got to work on it. That's you know. That's that's definitely some areas of improvement. <laughs> it last, you know, why is the provider partner relationship more important, more impactful, and how, as we hopefully are coming out of this global crisis, how can we work together to meet our customers' needs? Yeah, you know, great question. You know, and I feel like uh, the relationship between like Intellisys and Vonage, you know, has always been strong. And I feel like it's extremely important, right? We kind of are in this, I almost feel like a symbiotic relationship that's dependent upon the, the downstream customer, right? If our customer success is successful, obviously, you know, Intellisys is successful, but obviously Intellisys is successful as a, and so are we, right? And I feel like now in this environment that we're in, um, you know, having a trusted partner, uh, a trusted advisor like what Intellisys, you know, uh, is for its sports and downstream customers is extremely important because customers are looking to now these trusted advisors to really help them, guide them through the process, right? Help them not only deal with the situation they're currently in, but also set them up for future success. So when they grow and expand or when they come back to work, having the disaster recovery aspects in place, having the right infrastructure in place, having the right technologies in place that they can scale with is extremely important. So again, no one likes to be sold to, they like somebody to help them provide a solution for their organizations, right? And I think that's really where the partner relationship is so critical because again, you know, as partners, the intelligence team can go in there and really kind of help. And again, we want to enable our partners with providing them all the appropriate tools and all the appropriate resources so that they can go be that trusted advisor for their downstream customers and be able to provide those solutions that, that will not only help them today, but set them up for the future as well. Wow. Hey, I can keep asking you questions, but then again, I want to leave something for the partners to have to reach out to you and ask you some more questions. So first of all, thank you to Vonage. You guys have been amazing supplier partners of, of Intellisys for years. Part of the cloud services university and we look forward to hopefully soon uh, being able to do some events with you out in the regions out the, with our partners thank you akil for taking the time with meeting us and we certainly appreciate you sharing your insight in these very unique and critical times and so to our partner community uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to anyone on the advantage team reach out to your intellisys team we can make sure we get you guys connected or of course go to our go remote hub on intellisys.com thanks everyone Thank you.